Turn with me to the book of Jonah, chapter 4, is where we start from. Jonah, chapter 4. From verse 1, but it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he became hungry. So he prayed to the Lord and said, Ha Lord, was not this what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore, I fled previously to Tarshish. For I know that you are gracious and merciful God, slow to hunger, abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. Therefore now, Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Then the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? So Jonah went out of the city, sat on the east side of the city. Here he made himself a shelter, sat under it in the shade, till he might see what will become of the city. And the Lord prepared a plant and made it come over Jonah, that he might be shade for his head to deliver him from his misery. So Jonah was very glad for the plant. But as the morning dawned the next day, God prepared a worm and it damaged the plant that it withered. And it happened when the sun arose that God prepared a vehement east wind. And the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. Then he wished death for himself and said, it is better for me to die than to live. Then God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And he said, it is right for me to be angry even to death. But the Lord said, you have had pity on the plant for which you have not labored nor made it grow. It came up in the night and perished in the night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city, in which are 120,000 persons who cannot Descend between their right and their left and much life stock. Amen. The last verse is what is important to me most. He said, Shall I not pity Nineveh, that great city, which in which are more than 120,000 persons who cannot discern? The word design means something can be so much in their presence and they cannot see it. There's so much that God is doing even when we don't perceive anything. What is lacking is not the absence of the works of God, it's the discernment of men. So much can be hanging around your life and in your life at moments and you do not discern it. What was it that Nineveh did not discern? In Jonah chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Jonah chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh that great city, and preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city. Three days journey in extent. Jonah began to enter the city on the first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Nineveh had in his lifespan forty days remaining and there was nothing in the atmosphere that said it. They were approaching a devastating judgment. And nothing felt like it. The sun rose up and went down. Plants came. Harvest came. And life continued. 
And because life continues normally, human discernment gets weakened, even when they are in the face of something very serious that God is about to do. And so God must get our attention because so much can be happening and yet so much can be missed. In the book of Job chapter 33 verse 14, Job 33 verse 14, the Bible says, For God may speak in one way or in another way, yet man does not perceive it. So the, the fact that God is speaking does not automatically mean men will perceive. Are you following me? So God can be speaking. You know, that God may speak in one way or in another, yet man does not perceive. You know, I think the, 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 the other scripture that balanced this is Psalm 62 verse 11 that said, Once have God spoken, twice have I heard that all power belongs to God. You are here that person that God speaks once to and there's so much alertness in you that you hear it twice. Or you are that person that God has spoken twice and you have never heard it once. You are either one of the two. Are you following me? Psalm 62 said, God spoke once, twice a heart. Job 33, 14 said, God spoke in one way and the other and yet man does not perceive it. So man can be in the midst of the speakings of God and yet man does not perceive it. Time will fail me to tell you that in Genesis 28 verse 16, Jacob laid in, on that ground and he saw a ladder that reached to heaven. And when he woke up, he said, surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. That God is somewhere does not mean there will be shakings. That God is somewhere or God has planned something ahead for you does not mean that the atmosphere around you will begin to you know, turn around and you begin to perceive. There must be something in you called discernment. That was what Nineveh lacked. God in this, in this place, and I do not know. Proverbs 19 verse 2 said, It is not good for man to be without knowledge. My prayer is that we will have knowledge. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 12 says, A man does not know his time. It's like fish caught in a cruel net, like bot caught in a snare. That is how men live. When, the, when a fish is about to be caught, the fish thinks it's about to catch food. Then he discovers that he is not the predator, he's actually the prey. And there are times men live without discernment. They are the face of something so imminent ahead of them, and yet there is nothing that discerns it for them. It is not good to be without knowledge. And the, whole, the Lord had made provision for that in 1 Corinthians 2. Verse 7 to 12, the Bible says, it's only the spirit of a man that knows the things of a man, but it's the spirit of God that knows the things of God. And God has given us his Holy Spirit so that we might know the things that are freely given to us. Somebody said the things are freely given to us. So it's in the agenda of God that we will not be like a fish that does not know his time. It's in the agenda of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us. It's important we know. Luke 19 verse 41 to 44. Luke 19, 41 to 44. Jesus cried over Jerusalem and said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. As he drew near the city, he wept over it and said, If you had known, even you, especially in this your day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from you. It's the cry of God that we know certain things. Because you can be in the face of a breakthrough and the entire environment is telling you you are defeated. And that's why God must heighten what is called discernment. What was lacking in Nineveh was discernment. And God, in one way or the other, had to get the attention and what god used to get the attention was the proclamation of jonah the bible says when jonah got there in jonah chapter 3 from verse 5 when he finished and told them that in 40 days nineveh was about to be overthrown we saw a reaction from them the bible said the people of nineveh believed god proclaimed the fast put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them the Bible says the word came to the king of Nineveh. He arose from his throne. He laid aside his robe. He covered himself in sackcloth and sat in ashes. 
He caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, add nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them even eat or drink water. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let every man from, turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hand. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? Verse 10, and God saw their works. Now, there was something Nineveh would have continued into that 40 days ahead of destruction except for the preaching of Jonah. And when Jonah preached, there was a reaction. Something came alive. So really there was fasting trapped up inside somebody that did not know. There was repentance trapped up inside the people. You wouldn't even believe that that nation could turn to God like that, except that God did something to get their attention. And many a times God has to do something to get our attention so that the real powers that he has put inside of us can be released. The type of response, you know, that is put inside of us can be released. Those responses are there, but they are not released because there is no discernment. So we continue life as though nothing is at stake when a lot is at stake. Are you still following me? Say a lot is at stake. We are entering the anniversary season and a lot is at stake. I mean, the days might look normal and the days might look like the same. And say, we did it last year, we did the year before the last, we'll do it next year. So what's so significant about it? Significant days don't shout on top of the mountain. It takes discernment inside of people to know that they are approaching significant days. Are you still with me? And, and that was Nineveh. He didn't know his right hand and his left. And that's why we're looking at parables and interpretations. Parables are things God uses to get our attention. And I'm trusting that God will get your attention. Uh, you didn't say amen. In Exodus chapter 3 verse 1 to 11. Exodus chapter 3 verse 1 to 11. Bible says Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law at the backside of the desert. And he saw, he came to the mountain of God to Oreb, and he saw a burning bush. Yeah, the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in the midst of bush. He looked and bold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. And he said, I will now turn and see this great sight. Why? Somebody say why. This, this must be something to investigate. And the Bible says, when the Lord saw that he turned aside, the Lord did something to get his attention. And now people have told, said a lot of things like, oh, the burning bush means Israel that was in captivity and yet they were not, for, they were not destroyed. They were burning in Egypt. They were under pressure. But the most important thing about the burning bush was that it was a site God just wanted to use. To get Moses' attention. And there are things God must steer to get your attention because you can be at the precipice of something so important and you will not feel it. So the Bible says immediately turned to see God called him out of the bush. God began to speak. God said, this is my moment. My prayer for you is that God will get his moments with you in the name of Jesus. But God is funny. God has power in this moment. I can come to church and I'll be talking about something that doesn't make a lot of meaning to me, but it will make a lot of meaning to you because you say, ah, this looks like I saw something like this. I, you, you can have a dream in the night and all you saw was a black car. And I come to church and say, the power of a black car. And, yeah. and it doesn't make meaning to so many people, but it makes so much meaning because you could have even forgotten that meaning, that encounter until somebody mentions it. Then it, it just, and what does it do? It heightens all your sensitivity. And when your sensitivities are heightened, your reception is high. God must do something to heighten our sensitivities. So that it will not just speak and it will pass. Are you following me, church? Say, God must help our sensitivities. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, verse 30. Acts of the Apostles, 7, verse 30. The Bible told us that this how God called Moses. When 40 years were passed, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire in a bush in the wilderness of Mount Sinai. Verse 35. Give me verse 35. And the, this most whom they rejected saying, who made you a ruler and a judge is the one God sent to be ruler and deliverer by the hand of the angel who appeared to him 
in the burning bush. So the real issue is that there was an angelic encounter or there was an encounter of God. But God had to make it appear in something that would catch his attention. Something he wanted to investigate. Why is this bush burning and it is not consumed? But it was not, the, that was not the message. The message is there is an apparition, an angelic visitation of God that has been sent to him. The burning bush was just a sign to what? To call his attention. In our transaction with God, God must get our attention. There are certain things. See, have you ever been speaking to somebody and you look at the person and say, you are not listening? Now that you are not listening does not mean I'm not talking. I can be talking and you are not listening. And if you are not listening, whatever I'm saying, no matter how important it is, you will miss it. And a lot of people are not listening. I will tell you the truth. That you come to church does not mean you are listening. That you come to service does not even mean you are listening. You are not listening. Tell your neighbor, are you really listening? May God give you a parable that will catch your attention. In the name of Jesus. And one major tool God uses to catch people's attention, especially the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, was parables. For example, in Matthew chapter 15, from verse 1 to 20, they were speaking about why his um, disciples were eating with unwashed hands, that their hands, they don't wash their hands when they were eating. There was a whole lot of issue for the Pharisees, for their ceremonial issues. And he began to tell them, he said, he said they, 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 they honor their traditions more than the word of God. You know? And, and in verse 10, verse 10, when he had called the multitude himself, he said to them, hear and understand. What goes into the mouth, oh, give me verse 9, let me see. Okay. He said they were teaching traditions of God. Teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. I want to pick one word. Because I don't want to take too much of our time. That's Matthew 15. Um, okay, let's go. Let's continue. When I called the multitude himself, he said to them, Hear ye and understand. What goes into the mouth the not what goes into the mouth defies a man, but what comes out of the mouth, this defies a man. Verse 12. And disciples came and said to him, do you know the Pharisees were offended when they had this saying? The Pharisees somehow just knew that. Even sometimes when they didn't know what he was saying, they knew he was talking about them. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, there was a point Jesus said, I have come. So that them who are seen will be blind and them who are blind will be seen. And the Pharisees said, are we also blind? Did he mention anybody's name? He just did something that was able to cut their attention. And one of the things Jesus uses parables to do is to cut people's attention. There are Pharisees who are offended. And some of you, even if you are going to change and your, and your testimony of transformation is going to happen, God must say something occasionally that offends you. Just, what is that? What? What is that can be the reason why you say, why is that? Why is that can lead you to what you are really looking for? Are you following me? There are parables and there are interpretations. In, in the book of Matthew 13, you know, he, he spoke the parable of the sower, the man that went to sow his, uh, the, 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 his field and some fell on the wayside and some fell on the rock and some fell among thorns and some fell on the, the ground. And in verse 10, the Bible says, the disciples came to me and said, why do you speak to them in parables? And it's, he answered, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to them it has not been given. Why do I speak to them in parables? Because it has been given to you to know. You see, if, if you read that in, in Mark chapter 4, that same parable, in Mark chapter 4, uh, let's just go to verse 10. In Mark chapter 4. The Bible says, when he was alone, those around him with the 12 asked about the parable. Because as those people were hearing the parable, they knew there was something inside this parable, but that does not mean they knew what the parable is. Are you following me? 
Have you been here? Now that's why sometimes people come to faith church and say, when I first came to faith church, I didn't understand what pastor was saying, but I knew there was something in what he was saying. And sometimes it's important to have that curiosity because it can become your initiation to understand it. But if you never have the curiosity, if there's no cry inside of you, you cannot even be initiated to follow. So the Bible says when he was alone, those who had asked him, asked him about the parable. <laughs> he said, and he said to you, it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom, but for those who are outside, all things are parables. And he said to them, you know what? He said, the, he said, he said, so that seeing they might see and not understand, and uh, hearing they might hear and not understand, lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them. And if and he said, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all parables? And he said, The sower that sows the that sows the seed, the sower sows the word of God, and he began to tell us the different type of arts, those who had it by the wayside and everything. So the parables have a way. Jesus said, if you don't understand the parables, how will you understand every other parable? Because I use parables principally to what? To call the attention of people. And, but never forget that parables are not an end in themselves. Are you following me? That's why when he was alone, they asked him what the meaning. Meetings are never an end in themselves. They are to call your attention to bat something that God wants to do after now. Are you following me? So when you have been called into the parable, you seek forth for the interpretations. Amen. I say amen. Introduced to Joseph in Genesis chapter 37 verse 1 to 11. Joseph was a dreamer. He dreamt dreams. And in the first dream, he saw uh, what? What did he see? He saw him and his brothers gathering sheaves. And his sheaves stood and his brothers sheaves stood around him and bowed and the people say now he has the vision but he did not necessarily have the interpretation because he went to his brothers and said see what i saw and he can't deny he saw it no sir sometimes god must do something in your life that you cannot deny even if you cannot understand are you following me some of you is i say i remember there was a time I was a young person. I just saw myself in Europe. I was not thinking it. Somebody tell you, if it is now, we understand why you saw it. You know why you saw it? Economic pressure. But how many of you remember things that just, just happened out of the blues when you were not even looking forward to it? They could be plantings of God to get your attention. And so the Bible says, he's, he came again and told this. He said, I have another dream. And this one, I saw the moon. I saw this, the, the sun. I saw 11 stars bind to me. And they said, the Bible says, these brothers hated them the more. Even his father said, what is this useless dream you are dreaming? But his father kept it. Because the father knows parables have interpretations. There are times you don't yet understand. And you will react in a very strange way to it, but that doesn't mean you should discard it totally. Because times will begin to make us understand why God is showing us certain things. Are you still with me? So that was a season of his life. It was a season of dreaming. Then in Genesis 40 verse 1 to 23, he came into the seasons of interpretation. Because immediately he got to Egypt, he stopped dreaming. What did he start doing? started interpreting because every parable must have its interpretation the bible says when the disciples were alone with jesus they asked him what is the meaning something in them already said we have seen something but we have not seen what it means some people have not had the parable in this in this anniversary you will get your parable some people have gotten the parable in this time may it be i'm beginning to get what the meaning so, so he told the butler, he said, this is the meaning, he interpreted it. Then the Bible told us in Genesis 41, he interpreted the dream of Pharaoh. It was in the seasons of interpretation. Then in Genesis 42 verse 1 to 9, when the famine and it intensified in the land. I don't know how far I can go with this. Are you, still, are you getting one of the two things? 
when the family had intensified in the land and his brothers came and when his brothers came to buy food and he saw them and he recognized them but he did not recognize them and the bible said they prostrated before him and about then the bible said and he remembered the dream that was now when the meaning of whatever he saw started making sense See, without interpretations, parables will frustrate you. God is not only desirous of initiating and calling our attentions by parables. He wants to give us interpretations. Are you following me? It's called dreams and interpretations. Are we together? When, when he saw them, he remembered the dream. In fact, by the time you get to Genesis 45, verse 1 to 8, he now told them, God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. And now understand what I saw. That what I saw was about what? Preservation of life. What? Parables and what? Interpretations. There are too many things that have happened in our life and we thought they were mistakes. But they were deliberate. Do you see how God had to tell Jonah? How God had to use Something Jonah did not understand to explain to Jonah how he is thinking. He said, the Bible says in one night a plant grew from nowhere and covered Jonah's head and Jonah began to thank God. And in one night a worm came and destroyed the plant and Jonah began to fight God. And God told Jonah, are you, do you, are you right to be angry? He said, I have right to be angry. And God said, concerning a plant you did not plant. He came up one night, he destroyed one night, you want to die. What of Nineveh? A city of 120,000 people. How many of you know a city of 120,000 people never comes up overnight? You can't build a church of 5,000 people in one night. You can't become a profound teacher of the world in one night. And I tell you the truth. There are certain things that don't happen. There is so much forgiveness, so much grace. How many of you have... How many times in your life have you prayed for grace? How many times? So you are, as you stand like this, you are an answer to thousands of prayers. Are you following me? That's why when the enemy wants to crush you, they say, ah, no, no, no. You don't understand the things that have gone into a man being able to stand and declare what he's doing. A lot has gone into that Nineveh you are looking. Nineveh is not a one-night plant. Are you following me? So God had to use that. He said, and, and the funny thing is that, do you know, they don't even know their right hand from their left. God had to bring the understanding to what? To Jonah. What Jonah was accusing God of is what the Bible told us, that when we think God is slack concerning his promise, but what God was showing Jonah is that he is long-suffering for salvation. You see, long-suffering and slackness seems very similar, but they are not the same. Because slackness is a physical exertion. When somebody is slack, is that he's not exerting himself physically. But long-suffering is that the person is not exerting himself for what? For me soul. It does not mean you can be slack because you are physically tired. But you are long-suffering because you have controlled your spirit. It's not the lack of power. Are you following me? When God does not act the way you want him to act, you can call it snackness, but to him, it is what? But people see the two and call it the same thing. And God said, you don't understand. I'm dealing with 120,000 people here. You are dealing with one plant. Who don't even know their right hand from their left. And, so, and that is how God used natural things to what? To bring Jonah. I say, my prayer is that. If God start doing something around you, that when you come into the gathering of God's people, it will help you to understand what he's doing. Too many Christians come here and they are too blank. If God starts giving you visions, you don't even know why you are seeing them. Start giving you, the, some of you say, I saw pastor. Have you ever, on a Sunday morning, you just saw pastor coming to your, uh, vision, to your dream? Say, I need to speak to you. How will you come to church that Sunday? Eh? Your ears will be high. If pastor said dance, you will dance. He said, Pastor said, 
Are you following me? Yes, because these are tokens, these are parables of God to get our attentions and to prepare us for what? For an encounter. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 14 to 16. May the other part of your parables come to you. Look at Isaiah 34 from verse 14. The wild beast of the desert shall meet with the jackals. The wild goat shall bleat with his companion. Get the word. Don't forget. The night creature shall rest there and find herself a place of rest. The arrow snake shall make us nest and lay her eggs and arch and gather them under her shadow. They also, there also shall the ox be gathered. Everyone with a mate, verse 16. Search from the book of the Lord and read, not one of these shall fail, not, not one shall lack a mate, for my mouth has commanded it, and what? My spirit has gathered it. Everything God creates has his mate. For man to be productive, there must be a man and a woman. Until the, until the man meets his mate, what happens? It can't produce. Until what God has spoken meets the spirit that gathers it. There is no performance. So you, God speaks his word and his spirit executes it. Nothing must lack his mate. The mate of parables is interpretation. Are you following me? And until the mate, until anything finds his mate, it does not become what? Productive. So parables have their mate, and their mate is what? Interpretation. Until the vision of Joseph started meeting interpretation. It didn't become anything. Are you following me? So my prayer is that whatever God has started in your life, we meet his mate. Amen. And his mate will bring it productivity. Say the amen if you believe it very well. Amen. amen. This will lead me to the story I want to talk from. It's the story of Cornelius. And there are at least four major signs that the story of Cornelius taught us. Because of time. It's in Acts chapter 10. What's the story of Cornelius? That was a devout man. It was a devout man. Acts chapter 10. It was a centurion was uh, of what was called the Italian regiment. It was not a Jew. It was a Gentile. It was a devout man. One who feared God with all his household. Who gave hands generously to the people and prayed to God always. About the night out of the day, he saw clearly in the vision an angel of the Lord coming to him, saying to him, Cornelius. And when he had observed him, he was afraid. He said, Why, what is it, Lord? And he said, your prayers and your hands have come up to God for a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa. And send for Simon, whose son name is Peter. He's lodging. How many of you, if, if you have this type of a counter, what would be your... He's lodging in, with Simon, a tanner whose house is by the sea. He will tell you, have John, what you must do. If you hate Peter, and you don't like his face, but you have had this encounter. There is no way Peter will enter your house. You will not honor him. Because he must tell you what you must do. Now, none will lack his mate. One of the first lessons for, for Cornelius is that it's beautiful to be devoted. It's beautiful to be pious. It's beautiful to be an arms giver. And all those things are important. But let me tell you, none of them makes a man saved. He was flying on one wing and he was missing the other wing that was going to bring a completion to his journey. Because the Bible told us in Titus chapter 3, is it? Chapter 2, let me see. Verse 3 to 7. Let's read Titus 2, 3. Or is it Titus? Give me Titus 3. Is it? Three. Okay. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. 
But when the kindness and the love of our God, our Savior, appeared towards man, not by the works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. Whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. And having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The next and most important thing that Cornelius needs to know is that we are never saved by the works of our hands. I mean, all his arms would have become totally a waste without this message. And God said, I must. And if God did not steer him, he would have looked and said, I'm even better. And you know what? Peter might not even be paying as much harms as Cornelius. If God did not get his attention, one day he might look at Peter and say, you know how much I fast? This man fasts, prays. But it would have become his hindrance, not knowing that we are not saved by the works of righteousness which we have done, but we are justified by God grace so my prayer is i said your parables will meet their mates but that is just in then in that same acts chapter 10 from verse 9 the bible said peter that god was speaking about went up onto the house top to pray about the sixth hour and he became hungry somebody say hungry but that was what is in there. And wanted to eat. Whatever he was doing, he wanted to break the fast. But why they make ready? Which means somebody entered the kitchen. What do you do while they make ready? You read the newspaper. What do you do while they make ready? You solve the internet. What do you do while they, you know? While they made ready, he was not praying. He just fell into a trance. And do you know what the trance was about? He saw all manner of four-footed beasts and the trans started speaking to him about heat. He said, uh, um, Arise, kill, and eat. There is a way he made meaning to him because he is already hungry. Why is it that God spoke the encounter he wanted to give Peter around something that Peter has experienced? Because he makes a whole lot of meaning to you. When you are hungry and food is offered to you, are you following? And Peter said, this is a test. This is a test. God, I have never eaten anything unclean. And God said, not so. I cannot call anything unclean that I have caught clean. And God did it three times. If you have something and encounter three times, if you have a particular dream three times, can you ignore it? Three times. First time is ah, it was because I overslept last night. Hey, and yeah. Then tomorrow morning, it comes again. Or you discuss something with somebody, and you came to church, and it was exactly what pastor was saying. Say, was, ah, ah, it was like pastor was even in our house with you. Then you come on Sunday, pastor says the same thing, says another thing. Discover the hairs of your body will start standing. As the way somebody will be talking around you when somebody is preaching, he said. Familiar, familiar. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And the object was taken up into heaven again. And the Bible said, Peter wondered within himself, what is this? Am I hallucinating? Is God saying something? Why is God offering to me unclean animals? Why is was wondering within himself what this vision was had meant? Behold, the men who had been sent from Cornelius' house made inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. The question is, why didn't the men locate Peter before the vision? Because the vision was sent to prepare Peter for the men. The reason why we don't get the best of our encounters and we don't perceive God when he's speaking is because there are things he sends ahead of those meetings. We think they start with those meetings. Are you following me? And those things should have prepared you because they are the things that will waken your sensitivity 
when those things happen. So they just told him three men. He said, and they began and, and they called and asked whether Simon, whose son name was Peter, was lodging there. Don't forget, God had given these men. And Peter thought about the vision. The Spirit said to him, Build three men and seek you. Even if you are entirely spiritually dull, at this point you will know that I'm in the midst, something's happening. I'm thinking of eating. From heating, I saw myself, even if he woke up from that one, I said, oh, A B N U. But as he was wondering, the Lord said, There are three men looking for you. Go down with them, doubting nothing. I have sent them. And there were the type of people he never wants to go with because they were Gentiles. And he began to understand, okay. Then the Bible said, When he got to Cornelius' house, uh, he went, then Peter went down to the, to the men who have been sent from Cornelius and said, yes, I am he whom you seek. What reason have you come? Those people tell the story. Cornelius, the centurion, was a just man, one who fears God, good reputation among the Jews, was divinely instructed by an holy angel to summon you to hear, he says, and to hear words from you. He said, hey, hey, me. To sum, and the funny thing is that God did not talk to Peter. The only thing he told is, don't call any. He didn't even tell. Some of you say, God, what do you want me to go and tell Cornelio? Because the message was already inside of him. May you become the message. And he invited them and lodged them. On the next day, Peter went away with them and some brethren from Joppa accompanied him. This boy said, hey, apostle has gone mad. He's going to the Gentiles' house. Following this day, he entered Caesarea and now Cornelius was waiting. Why was Cornelius waiting? Because Cornelius had been prepared. You see, but the preparation must, for the encounter must meet his mate. And so as the angel appeared to Cornelius, the vision appeared to what? To Peter. So sometimes when people are coming for a meeting, they think the only person that needs to prepare is the man of God. You keep missing the point. God needs to visit a Cornelius as much as he needs to visit a Peter. Or is it Peter will come to your house and speak and you just say, what is he saying? So I say, Cornelius was waiting. He had called together his relatives and friends. I, I can't even imagine what Cornelius, what do you think Cornelius would be imagining God wanted him to hear? Maybe God was going to come and say, you are the next emperor of Rome. As Peter was calling it, Cornelius met him, fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Peter said, ah, ah, ah. I'm, my, I'm a man like you. And you know what? As he talked with him, he went and found many who had come together. He said, ah, what is this? Then Peter said, you know that it's unlawful for a Jewish man to keep company with or to go to another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Therefore, I came without objection as soon as I... See, your objections are broken when you have been prepared. Are you following me? May God break your objections. Some people's objection is... Some people can even get to a meeting and their objection is, how can a man of God have beard? And for 25 minutes, that's what they are thinking about. As the man of God is already prophesying. Yeah, they are still looking at the beard. You know, it's fufundu. He <laughs> said, God does not use people like that. Continue. He said, and, and that's the way the enemy just distracts you and makes you lose what he's doing. What God is doing. Some other people is that, I see his wife, his wife, a war heel. Whatever will become a cultural reason for you to miss it, may God start preparing you for an encounter. Yeah. You start seeing angels coming to you in heels. Because if you see them, maybe that will deliver you. From your basic traditions. <laughs> so I came without objection. I asked them, what reason have you sent for me? That one told him again, I was fasting. And in the night hour, I was praying. A man stood before me in bright clothing. Cornelius, your prayer has been heard. Your hands have been remembered before God. Uh, sent to Joppa, called Simon, whose name is Peter. He's lodging in the house of Simon. When he comes, he will speak to you. So I sent you immediately and you have done well to come. Now therefore we are all present before God to hear all the things commanded you by God. And Peter said, 
in truth I perceive. He would never have been able to join these encounters without God preparing. It was then his understanding opened. He said, ah, oh, hear me. I want to pray for somebody that you will have your now I perceive moments. No, Joseph came to his now I perceive. He just looked at his brother and said, ah. This is, even, this is not even about hierarchies. This is not about my, my, my sheep stood, your own sheep fed. No, this is about preservation. If you don't perceive, if you don't get it right, he, what you should be praising God for, you'll be fighting. Parables must come with their interpretation. Are we together? Somebody say, now I perceive. If somebody just wake up and look at his wife and say, oh dear, okay. Now I understand why it was not naked. Because you can be in a relationship for 15 years <laughs> and still be thinking that, oh, guilty and shaming by. But there's a God in heaven who is wise. And sometimes in his wisdom, he just leads you. Into some decisions, and you are asking yourself why and why and why, and you can live with that parable for years. Like Joseph lived with his dream for what years until you get to a moment and now I perceive. Oh, this is what God is doing. It was not a mistake. You will perceive right. I said you will perceive right in the name of Jesus. Now I perceive uh, that God is no respecter of person. Then he, he told him. Uh, but in every nation, whoever fears him and walks righteousness is accepted by him. And he said, the word with God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace to Jesus Christ. I don't have any other gospel to preach. Whatever, what is it that God has commanded me? It is that he had told me to preach Jesus. This man came and he was not looking for any special revelation. Because God, he said, we want to hear whatever God has commanded. He said, oh, my command was from Mark 16. When he told me, go into all the world, teaching them whatever I have taught you. So, there was no new command. It was just that God created an environment that made both the person that received the command and the people to receive the command understand what God is doing. They began to preach to him, Jesus. And for him to know that it was not a mistake. In verse 44 to 48, verse 44, while Peter was still speaking, that was another sign. The Holy Spirit fell upon those who had the word. And those of the circumcision who believe were what? Astonished. As many as came with Peter. Those people that came and said, the protocol officers. And the protocol was about defending Jewish rights. Then when we get to, we have to call a council on this thing. This thing that Peter is doing. This thing Peter is doing. I heard of you. See, because the next debate would have been when they get to Jerusalem, these people say, well, Peter preached to them, oh, but they were not circumcised. We have to send a team to go and circumcise them. That's when we can now begin to feel that they are getting. But Right there and there, the Holy Ghost Paul. And Peter now said, Who can forbid water? God has even gone ahead. Suddenly, the, the understanding of people started coming that if God had given them the Holy Spirit, who are we to, to stop God? Are we together? Hallelujah. See, that sign was not for Peter alone, it was a preparation God had given to him for what was going to happen after that time. If you go to Acts 11, let's go to Acts chapter 11. Glory to God. Now the apostles and the brethren who were in Judea had the genders of had received the word of God. And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those of the circumcision contended with him. See, if those people have not received the Holy Spirit, some people would have made Peter to believe. It was a demon that spoke to him. Because as he returned, some people are waiting. He went into uncircumcised men. I hate with them. <laughs> that explained to them in order from the beginning. 
Me. He said, let me say my own part. I was in the city of Joppa. Praying. Is it wrong to pray? They said, no. <laughs> and in a trance, do you believe in trance? They said, ah, ah, ah. You have entered into trance occasionally. I saw a vision. An object descending like grace. It led down from heaven by four corners. It came to me. You wallow. It was not that I was doing it. I will cover until we have. I was not. It, it came to me. May God bring some things to you. <laughs> when I observed it intended and concerned, I saw four-footed animals of earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and birds of the hair. I had a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. I don't think I obeyed. Though. I said, No, so long. For nothing unclean or common as at any time entered my mouth. But the voice answered again from heaven, what God has cleansed, you must not call common. See, one of the reasons why God must give you parables and interpretation is that he helps you to interpret your journeys. You discover that there is nothing you came to casually or you just embraced because that's what everybody is saying. You can trace how I end. See, I can trace how I understood that tongues is a sign. Some people just came here and when they had everybody, bo, 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 they say, hey, don't let me look strange. They say, babakus, kababakus. <laughs> <laughs> you must, how many of you can, can remember, when those days when people receive the Holy Ghost, they know. Because throughout the night, they don't sleep. They don't chew down. When the Holy Ghost fall upon you, you just discover when you wake up in the morning, rabba shut the ah. So if somebody comes later and says, hey, now your pastor put down for your mouth, you say, <laughs> Say, me, I'm like you too before. But that was one day. I said, oh, not those type. There's nothing called vision. I said, hmm. <laughs> me too, I was a skeptic. But that was one day. That was one day I sat in on my bed and it was like I saw that. I saw my entire life. <laughs> no, but some things, some, some things people cannot tell me is not. That is not it. Um, it. They can still be telling you. Me, that God does not speak. Hey, where are going to be playing your drum? Me. <laughs> or some people say there is no vision. At least two or three times in my life, I've fallen into trance. Do you know what they call trance? Trance, it will, you will know you are where you are, but you are not there. I've fallen into a trance before, and I went to Undo town. These are things I don't say in church. Because some of you start looking at me as if I'm. And I went to somebody's house. And I saw the house. I saw the entire. And the next year when I went to the house, it was exactly what I saw. I saw the mother of the person. I saw the face. I saw everybody. And I had a trance before. I saw myself in my mother's womb. And that was the end of a particular battle I have fought for years after that encounter. Well, you can tell me I was hallucinating, but you cannot tell me why I stopped having that affliction. Can you tell me? And so, <laughs> I, may your parables meet their interpretations. <laughs> These things were done three times and all were drawn up into heaven. At that very moment. You know, if it waited, some things can overtake. But at that very moment, ah, you will not miss your moments. Amen. May you not be the time when they want to prophesy to you is the time you step to the toilet. You know? Some people, when God is a man of God, tongue, what is the back call? They, they, they just went outside. They said something was troubling them. Nothing's troubling. It was the enemy that wants to see your cat. <laughs> you are laughing. You need these are the prayers you need to pray. Because we miss so many things because we are too casual. Christians are sometimes the most irreverent of God's presence. I'm telling you. No other. They can't say praise worship. And that day they wrote your encounter inside praise worship. 
you come to the preacher and the man is preaching he said he didn't bless you God said that's not your own message it's for some other people your own was in the opening prayer but when you came you were discussing outside you and Isaac and uh, Oga Corey and, uh, and and I'm just using it as an example I didn't say anything I don't know I don't know who's the Isaac I'm talking about <laughs> I'm just using as a time, you know. You are just outside, and, and people like in Canada are just walking around and solving land problems as if, yes, when you come to church, tell yourself, I've come to church. Stop playing games. You are at work morning till night. You will not solve Nigeria's problem. Since you've been going around, they're increasing fuel price. <laughs> Don't let me talk. So at that very moment, three men stood before the house where I was I have been sent to me from Samir, from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to go with them, doubting not. Moreover, this is brother accompanied me. I have witnessed. So. <laughs> and we entered the man's house. I lie. They said no. <laughs> and he told us I had seen an angel standing in his house who said to him, "Send men to Joppa and call for Simon, whose son is Peter." Who will tell you what by which you and your household will be saved? And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. Then I remembered the word of the Lord. Somebody said, then I remembered. There are things that happen that bring remembrance. I just remember the word of the Lord. How he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If therefore God has gave them the same gift, as he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus, who was I that I could withstand God? And when they had these things, they became silent. And they glorified God. Okay, then God. That was when they are under. So the reason why the Holy Spirit fell in Acts chapter 10 was because of Acts chapter 11. God already knew there were people waiting for Peter. Who tell him? Ah, uh-uh, you went there. So, as those people, as that sign fell, and there were at least six brethren, God even chose for witnesses. Because some of times, when some of the reason why God will do some things when some people are there is because if we come and tell you, you will say we're exaggerating. So, God will make sure sometimes some of you who are doubters, the day God wants to make a blind eye see. He will check the congregation and make sure you are there. First. So he showed today. <laughs> when he discovers you are seated, then he taps the server. There is somebody here. Even the gifts of the spirit can be activated in consciousness by God. You don't understand. Because if it comes to people who don't even understand, it does not make the impact it ought to make. Have you not heard Jesus went to Nazareth and he could not do many mighty miracles? So God even knows the audience that he operates certain things before. So when they had it, they said, okay, we now understand. I understand. So there were two signs. The sign one, Peter knew God shows no partiality and in every nation, whoever fears him is accepted. Number two, the sign two is that God has granted Gentiles what? Repentance to life. Amen. Are you still with me? Should I stop? So, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8. It's a very common scripture. It says there is a, to everything there is a season and for a time for every purpose on earth. And it listed 14 type of seasons. He said there is a time to be born and there is a time to die. That's number one. He said there is a time to plant and there is a time to pluck what is planted. That's two. Number three, he said there is a time to kill 
And there's a time to heal. Number four, he said, there's a time to break down. He said, there's a time to build up. Number five, he said, there's a time to weep. And the other one, there's a time to laugh. And he said, there's a time to mourn. And there's a time to dance. Number seven, he said, there's a time to cast away stones. And there's a time to gather stones. He said, there's a time to embrace. And he said, there's another time to refrain from embracing. He said, there's a time to gain. And he said, there's a time to lose. He said, there's a time to keep. And there's a time to throw away. He said, there's a time to, to tear. And there's a time to sow together. He said, there's a time of silence. And there's a time to speak. He said, there's a time of love. And a time of eight, he said, there's a time of war and a time of peace. Do you understand that the opposite of things makes us value what those things are? It is death that makes people understand birth. You understand? It is war that makes people know the power of peace. When you see Nigerians like, let there be a revolution, they've never seen war. Oh, they have not even seen riot. So some of you say, we should fight, we should fight. Have they shot tear gas before I said you before? And some of you went, some of you went to school for years. No, they didn't do a looter. Hey, law school. <laughs> there must be a looter. There was one day Fayoshe came to scatter Yunad. I was there. Oga. I pray in the spirit too. When police started shooting and had finished, I went to check results. I said, what am I? Do? I was asking myself, why am I here? <laughs> All of us entered one room. Tear gas was flying everywhere. And we, when he came, we, we, we were happy. He came to, we was students that were fighting Kuru, 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 Kuru. I was in the that day. When the governor slapped somebody, and everybody stood there and said, What? We're not going to agree. And uh, <laughs> then the time of war made everybody to start calling for the time of peace. You have despised so many things because you have not seen his mate. There's a time to embrace, there's a time to gather stones. It's a time to scatter. So if a man wants to build, he gathers stones. But if a man gets to a land and he wants to plant, what does he do? He clears the stone. Say, remove this stone here. But one day we say, well, this, there used to be one stone here. They say, we throw it inside the river. He says, ah. And we could have used it for foundation. Do you understand what I'm saying? What I'm trying to say is that things don't make meaning until you see this other side of them. Parables don't make meaning until they are they, the flip or the mate of parables is their interpretation. And it's their interpretations that make you value their parables. Like war makes you value peace. An embrace makes you value. If somebody is hugging, you say, hey, the day you refuse to hug. How are you? Let me hug you. Say, stay there. Hmm. There are women that when you are trying to call them, say, hey, leave me. Is this a little again? You want to hug? You know, see the other so the mate. The mate, when they say, hey, how are you hugging? Say, how are you? Say, you share? Joke where? Came in joke with him. You discover you will start praying. Father, let him hug me. Can he join? <laughs> I won't talk more than that. Uh, I'm just praying for you and for me that God will give us ability to interpret our parables. Because we, we continue to miss the point many times. Jesus, in, in, in Luke 14, 1 to 6, he healed a man on the Sabbath day. And uh, the, the, the Pharisees were angry because he was healing a man on Sabbath day. Then he asked them a question. Is Sabbath day really a day that people don't work at all? He said, do, do you people not lead your, lead your cattle to water on Sabbath day? He said, eh. and so, it's a Sabbath day. You don't carry load on Sabbath day. It's a day when 
people are eased. So the day, if we take away sickness on Sabbath day, are we not still? But they were just fulfilling the law of it without getting the interpretation. So what Jesus was doing that day was he was actually fulfilling the Sabbath by rolling away what? The body. How many of you know sickness is a body? You will not be sick. I will not be sick. Oh, sickness is a body, no? Sickness is in somebody's body. You wake up 5 a.m. knowing. The answer is today. That would be a better lane. <laughs> You'll be comparing and assessing your day by the pay. Sometimes by the word of the Lord is taken away. In this anniversary, burdens will be rolled away. There will be healings in the name of Jesus. And, and we'll begin to understand what these things are about. I'll jump a lot of things. I'm only praying that God wake us up. In Judges 6, 17, God had been speaking to Gideon. And Gideon said a statement that I like. Judges 6, 17. Gideon said to him, If I have found favor in your sight, show me a sign. That it is you that what that talk with me. Somebody says, Show me a sign that it is you that is talking to me. There are some thoughts that when they, I mean, something just enters you, you feel like giving your salary. Sure, God is talking. Has anybody been provoked before? Do you want to give your entire salary? We well, are willing to be obedient, but the question is. Who is really talking to me? God must do certain things. He said, I was listening to one man of God. He said he was praying and praying. And in prayer, just felt God told him that the time to build a new building for his church has come. He didn't have the money. But he felt it. Because there are some things that just happen. I pass, you know, it was Paul that said when they were about to sail in that Acts 27. He said, I perceive. I don't know, but I, I just feel like this journey should not happen. He said, that man of God said, as he went out of that prayer, he said, he met a small boy, a small child, and the small child came and gave him a pen. The small child said, I want to give this towards the beauty. Even if you are the devil, you will know. He said it was not the weight of the money anymore. It was the, the consciousness it brought to him that, oh, God is in this thing. One of the prayers I'm praying for you is that God will make you know is the one talking to you. Because there are times you want to take some steps and it's not that you are unwilling, but the truth of the matter is that you just want to be sure that it is not zeal. Somebody offered me something recently and I said, I like it, but I don't like debt. And when you like it, they say, say, Pastor Eshe. I said, <laughs> God can show you his eye that he's the one that is talking. I want this season that we are entering into to come with such awareness that God is talking to us. That's my prayer. Come with such level of awareness that God is talking to us. Are, you, are we together? In, in Luke 1 from verse 26, an angel of the Lord appeared to Mary. And for you to know that it was an angel of the Lord, it, it probably didn't have a wing. Because if it had wing, it just told Mary, um, continue. Yes. Continue. He said, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying and considered what man of greeting is there. So somebody called me on um, during the week. 
And as he called me, as I picked the call, I said, Your Excellency, he just talked. He said, Do you know why? He's in America. He said, We just finished our church convention yesterday. And one of the words that we were saying in the church convention is, The Lord will make you an eternal excellency. He said, And I was considering of changing my bio on my WhatsApp to His Excellency. And as he called me, I said, Your Excellency, wouldn't you make me need to? He felt like, ah. Maybe that's a governor in wait. A greeting can be a prophecy. Just felt, what manner of greeting is this? And the angel said, Don't be afraid, you have found favor. You will have a child. <laughs> and I said, Okay. Then he told the angel, but okay, okay. Now I know God is talking, but there are still questions. How shall I have a child? That no man that's not a problem. The Holy Ghost will overshadow you. That which is born of you shall be called Son of God. And for, for you to understand, Elizabeth, your cousin, who was called by that, she's now six months pregnant. That was a way for you to. So if you go to Elizabeth and Elizabeth is pregnant. Then you are not hallucinating. Are you following me? That is the interpretation of your parent. And that's why when she entered Elizabeth out, God confirmed it. Elizabeth said, How is it that the mother of my Lord has entered to come to me? Because as soon as you greeted me, the baby inside of me, the, the Mary said, Oh, Lord, I'm your handmaid. That was a way God got attention. She just submitted to the process. In this season, may God get your attention in such a way that you will submit yourself to it. I thought you would say a better amen. I said, May God get your attention in the name of Jesus. There are riddles, there are riddles in God, parables to call your attention. In Judges 14, Samson was going to the house of his wife, a lion roared against him, and he tore the lion. He came back after some time and found the carcass of the lion and he found bees on the lion and he found honey on it. And he took honey out of it and was eaten. And the Bible said he didn't tell anybody. Then when in verse 12, when he got to his uh, in-law's house, he said, I want to post you a riddle. What's a riddle? A riddle is a statement that has a lot of meaning, but it's a dark saying. Ekpeleo. You know, there's, there's where I can say Ekpeleo. And you know that all, all I'm saying is that, oh, Mark Peleo. <laughs> and he said, if you can correctly solve it, my prayer is that you will correctly solve riddles. Because life itself is a riddle. Have you ever asked yourself, why did this man offer me this thing at this time? Why did this. There are always, always so many whys. Why? Moses turned around to see why the bush was born. That's a riddle. And so he said, if you can solve it in seven days, I'll give you this. If you don't solve it, you'll get this. I asked, give us the riddle. Everybody lost riddle and it becomes a problem. And what was the riddle? He said, Oh, out of the strong. Out of the eater came something to eat, and out of the strong came something sweet. For three days they could not explain the riddle. It became serious. They went to his wife. And said, so the reason why you brought us here to steal our money? Why is it? You are the one that accepted. Then the wife went to Samson and said, ah, ah, And I'm your wife. All of you be careful. And I'm your wife. I'm your wife. Talk about this of anybody. If you did not tell anybody, you should tell me. I'm just saying, I have not even told my father. Oh, your wife has some power that has some power that your father and your mother does not have. Are you? So if you build a house without telling your father, it's called maturity. If you build a house without telling your wife, it's called concealment. <laughs> I won't say more than that. Tell your neighbor, take care of your wife well, very well. Since I've been preaching yesterday, I've been talking about wife. Wife. My JK should buy away sorrow. She praised him 
came so much, he explained the riddle to her. <laughs> she went to her so, 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 And those people said, ah, what is as sweet as odd? What is as strong as lion? Ah. Then he said, ah, you have plowed with my heifer. If you don't plow with my heifer, you can't solve my riddle. You need something more than just common sense to solve a riddle. You must have insight. You must have hints. Are you following me? And, and God must give us hints so that the riddles can become clear. Are you following me? Amos 3, 7 said, The Lord will do nothing except he reveals his secret to his prophet. The prophets interpret the riddles. So instead of life to become a puzzle and a parable, the prophetic makes it what? Understandable. My God and my Father, may the spirit of understanding descend upon us. How many of you know preaching is not just the, the exercise of a man to feel very excited and intelligent. Preaching is actually a redo to paint to men their lives. So when Jesus was saying, a man went to sow his, sow his seed, he was not talking about agriculture. He was talking about the people who are seated in his front. Because at a point of interpretation, he told them, the sower that sows the seed is the son of man. The seed is the word. The ground is the heart of man. But some people were just hearing Japan, the thirty story. A man went. Ah, a man went. Our generation has lost the power of riddles. When I was, when, when they were telling us, thought, you know, when we were young, some of us thought thirties can speak. The way they and we felt it was a very corny and crafty. Then the day you went to the zoo, you were disappointed because it was a redo. They were trying to tell you don't be desperate about life. That's the day they used to teach us things. Today, there's so much information, but very few, very little understanding. Jesus said, Can I show you how I take care of you? Look at the birds. They too are always flying around. You are not the only one that drive from to Betway. They, some birds have gone from Lagos to Ibadan today. And they are on their way back. Is it you? <laughs> Look at the birds! Your father takes care of them. Do you have understanding? Do you even know you have a father? Because all of you have forgotten. You are now living as orphans. As if you are just alone here. Solving your problem. I have a father. No, the funny, funny thing is that. When they say, see what your father has done for a stranger. What does that do to you? The day they tell you, your father built a house for somebody. And you go. Is that you look at that father with a good eye or with a bad one? Ah, ah the one be? <laughs> when our mothers really wanted to get us, get us eh, infuriated when we were young, they said, Oh, Brito, the Kole Lori Baba in a Kure. Oh, Brito, the Kole Lori Baba in Niba de Otomefa. You will be hungry because in your mind you will start seeing mansions that you should be living in and be asking yourself where you and your brother you are sharing a room. <laughs> your father takes care of the board. In other words, I'm planting a new idea in you. If your father can do that to something that cannot even reconnect with it, how much more should we live? We, God needs to give us the parables. God will not do nothing unless he reveals his secret to his servant. May you see the secrets of God. Hmm. Almost true. Psalm 49 verse 1 to 4. Psalm 49. Hear this all peoples. Give ye all inhabitants of the world. Both low and I rich and poor together. My mouth shall speak wisdom. The meditation of my heart shall give understanding. I will incline my ears to a proverb. I will disclose my dark 
sings on the harp. The initiate, uninitiated, we hear the sound. It's called talking drum. If they play talking drum beside most of us, we don't know what they are saying. Talking drum is a very dangerous instrument. Only booba bye, come on, do. They are abusing your father, you are dancing. Because your ears are not inclined to hear. It's called dark saints. God can stand before some people and be announced. There was 40 days intended judgment before the Navy, and they could not discern. And when you cannot discern, you'll be dancing to what is abusing you. And fighting what is praising you. The Lord will open your ears to the dark sayings of the Lord. Psalm 78 from verse 1 to 7. Psalm 78 from verse 1 to 7. Give ear, O my people, to the law, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. Somebody say in a parable. I will utter dark sayings. So parables are what? Dark saints. They are not empty saints, but they are dark saints. And many a times when you don't understand something, you say it's not. It's not. Your lack of understanding of a statement does not mean the statement does not have meaning. Sometimes some people say, I don't know why pastor was just preaching. That he was just preaching. And you I don't understand. Continue. And you now is understanding Babylon. Look on well, Babylon. I said, I said I wanted to sell a car. He was saying, understanding Babylon. <laughs> I will open my mouth in the parable. My God, Father, open our understanding. We won't, mi- we won't miss our moments. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide it from their children. Telling the generation to come the praises of the Lord. His strength, his wonderful works that he has done. He established a testimony in Jacob. He appointed a law in Israel which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Verse 6, that the generation to come might know them. Even though they are dark saints, but the intention is that they should be comprehended in such a way that they can be transmitted. Are you following me? It should be comprehended so clear that you can even transmit it to your children. May dark sayings become clear to you. Clear enough for you to hear and clear enough for you to teach. I said clear enough for you to hear and clear enough for you to teach in the name of Jesus Christ. Look at Proverbs chapter 1 from verse 1. Thank you Lord Jesus. Proverbs of Solomon. Proverbs is a dark saying. Son of David, the king of Israel. Continue. To know wisdom and understand it. To perceive words of understanding. To receive instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. To give prudence to the simple, to young men, knowledge, and discretion. A wise man was, will hear and increase learning. A man of understanding will attain wise counsel. To understand a proverb and an enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles, the fear of the Lord. This is what it takes to understand the proverbs of God. Somebody that fears God will give attention to anything he's saying, even if you don't seem to first comprehend why he's saying it. To understand the proverb of the wise, the words of enigmas. And life itself is enigmatic. Life is a riddle. Why am I here? Why am I in Nigeria? Isn't that a riddle? You didn't do anything to not to, to be here. It, it just... Why were you born of your father? Yes, the Bible says polygamy is not right, but if God allow your father to marry Tidi, without Tidi, you won't come. 
Is that not an enigma? And yet, after that time, God came to you and said, You can marry second wife. And yet, God bless your father. Skinny go boy leg. And to buy to buy a far away. What some people did, and I break through. Some people did and suffer. Is that not an enigma? Somebody says, when I carry second wife into my house that I blew. <laughs> you did <I> say, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then you will know you have been in faith rest. Where God will not overlook your hair up because that's not ignorance. That's disobedience. You will. And like that. To understand the proverb and enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom. My prayer for you is that you will understand what you hear. First Corinthians 10 verse 1 to 13. I just jump. First Corinthians 10 verse 1 to 13. Bible says there was a generation that drank the same spiritual drink. They, they drank the waters from the rock. They, they, they ate spiritual food. They were baptized into Moses. They passed through the river. But why is God telling us this? Verse 6 told us, number one, if these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they lost it. Because that generation enjoyed everything. But verse 5 said, But with most of them, God was not pleased. Can a generation enjoy the blessings of God without pleasing God? He said, But with most of them. And how did it happen? Because they didn't please God. So these things became what? Examples. The funny thing in, about life is that examples are always before us. Like the famous quote that Pastor Sheye used to say. There are many highs that look. But very few highs that see. The stories of certain people in your should have taught you. Have you do discovered that the race is not to the swift? If you don't believe me, watch Cristiano Ronaldo. No matter how much goals you score, if you will never win World Cup, you will never win. For you to understand the proverb of, of the wise. <laughs> As for anybody that wants to get offended. <laughs> Most of them, God was not pleased. But this is what I've written as examples. Go to verse 11. Verse 11 said, Now all these things happened to them as what? Examples again. That, and they were written for admonition upon whom the ends of the age has come, have come. Therefore let him who thinks he stand, take it lest he fall. Verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you, except what is common to man, but God is faithful. We will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will make a way of escape that you may be able to bear. But with most of them, God was not pleased, but the Bible didn't say with all of them. With most of them. Do you know that as much as that entire generation was wasted in the wilderness, there was a killer? which means no matter how intense a situation is there is always within it a way of escape you are going to have to look deeply what example you want to imbibe whether the ones with which God was not pleased are you following me or the ones that truly went through that intense pain but God made a way Caleb was delayed for 40 years. But Caleb still got it. Because God will not allow you to be tempted with above the measure. God gave him the measure and the capacity for everything he went through. Yes, he was delayed for 40 years. But at 80, he said, I am still as strong as I was 40 years ago. God never made it to count. Which means for every temptation, the way of escape will be sufficient. Will be adequate. You will have no sense of loss when God delivers you. Are you following me? Are you with me? So that is the parable. And it was written as examples unto us whom the world has come. Stand to your feet. Let's pray one prayer. 
don't know. First Corinthians 14 verse 1 to 5. First Corinthians 14 1 to 5. Pursue love. Desire spiritual gift. But especially that you may prophesy. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him. However in the spirit he speak mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation and comfort to men. Verse 4. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even much more that you prophesy. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he may interpret that the church may receive education. Do you discover that to, there is a gift that has his mate? It's called tongues and interpretation. The Bible says, if there is no man that can interpret, let the one that is speaking in tongues speak to himself and to God. The interpretation is what brings what edification to others. And without that interpretation, the one who is speaking in tongues will speak and is speaking rightly, but it will not accompany accomplish what it ought to. How many times have we gone into the right atmospheres? Where the true parables of God are spoken, but the interpretations are missing. And when the interpretations are missing, the edification is lost. Are you following me? That's why I told you that God must prepare a Peter as much as he prepares a Cornelius. But when he brings a Peter who has seen a vision with a Cornelius who has seen an angel, it doesn't take time for the Holy Ghost to move. There must be encounters and their interpretations there's one prayer i want you to pray tonight that god will have will start his work with you from now now when he starts it you might not have a full comprehension of what it is until the fullness of time when the mates or the interpretation of it comes then you now say now i understand i want you to pray for yourself today see how many of you are asking yourself a question is this what i'll be doing to get to where i'm going how many of you believe <laughs> or some of you have called it to him and said oh, that on plan, you lay low. it's a lie these things that are high to you today you will look back soon and you will never say so there was a time so, there was a time when they said 5 million I will be agitating no the season you see it is in god's plan for you in your journey that very soon when they mention 50 million it will be part of what they call recurring expenditure i'm telling you the truth i know you can't you, you can't comprehend it now but it is true and sometimes god not needs to start initiating some things in your life to start expanding your mind so that when that season comes are you following me you are the last born of a house, but it's showing you relationship like Joseph. He's trying to tell you. I must stop thinking it's about a um, coat of many color. If you take Joseph to the mall that day, he wants to buy a toy. And God is looking at it. All right, you got that toy. I need to start putting certain things in your mind. I need to start putting certain things in your mind. Lord, start a new walk with me. Pray that prayer for yourself. Let the Lord start sowing some seeds into your subconscious tonight. Seeds that will help you to interpret the encounters that is ahead of you. The encounters is preparing for you. Let the, let the Lord begin to heighten your sense of discernment. Somebody pray for an, a new heighten sense of discernment. I will not walk in darkness. I will not walk in confusion. I will not walk in darkness. I will not walk in darkness. I will not walk in illusion. I will not walk in confusion. Pray for yourself tonight. Pray for yourself tonight. Thank you, Lord, for parables and interpretations. And thank you for preparing us for an encounter. Thank you for preparing me for an encounter. I will not walk in darkness. You will show me your light. You will show me your light. Oh, send your light and your truth today. Yeshua, Hamashiach. Oh, send your light. Oh, 
accept your life and your truth today. Yes, you are. I'm a Shia. Let it lead me. Let it lead me to your altar in your holy. Say, oh, send your light, oh, send your light, oh, send your light, and your truth today, Yeshua, Amashia, oh, send your light, oh, send your light, oh, send your light, and your truth today. Yes, you are. I'm a Shia. Let it lead me. Let it lead me through your altar in your holy hill. Let it lead me through your Let it lead me. Let it lead. Let it lead me. You know, as I was rounded up, I just remembered where this conversation started between me and God because I just discovered I did this, it was not even in my message. Jeremiah 31, 21, and 22. God was speaking about the return of Israel. Jeremiah 31, 21. Look at what he said. Set up signposts. Make landmarks. Set your heart towards the highway, the way in which you went. Turn back, old virgin of Israel. Turn back to these, your cities. How long will you guard about all you backsliding daughter? The Lord has created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall encompass a man. You know, it's like when you are going on a path that you have never gone before and you are returning. The f- easiest thing to do for you not to lose your way is that you are going. Start creating landmarks. Some people will cut a tree so that when they get back to the... You must find something familiar. Because if you don't see something familiar, you won't find your way. Are you following me? So when you are on your way back, you just don't say, okay, this is the plant I cut. This is, you see, God must set up something familiar when you are finding your way. That is pa- what parables and interpretation. So when, when Peter wanted to go to Cornelius' house, he remembered the vision. He said, okay, okay. When, when he was debated, he remembered how they received the Holy Spirit. And as long as he kept seeing those signposts, he kept finding his way. Are you following me? Lord, I let there be signposts in my journey. I must never lose my way. I must never lose my journey. I must never lose my direction. I must never lose my direction. I must never lose my direction. Just pray for yourself tonight. I must never lose my direction. I must never lose my direction. And yes, yes, I'll be taking many decisions in a short time. But help me never to miss my direction. Set up signposts. Set up landmarks. Some of you need some landmark encounters for the next 20 years that will help you to find your way. When confusion comes, you will just revert back to that landmark. Lord, let me find landmarks. Landmarks can be visions. They can even be dreams. Landmark can be a scripture that God will just put it. will come alive in you. Every time you are lost in your way, you find that scripture, you find your path again. Send landmarks. 
set signposts. Let me never come into a point of confusion about the things you have brought me to and the things you have brought for me. Set up landmarks. Set up landmarks. Signposts. For our spiritual journey, set up landmarks. Signposts. In this season, set up landmarks. Set up signposts. Let us find our way every time. Let every parable meet his interpretation. Let everyone find his mates. Set up landmarks. Set up signposts. Set up landmarks. Set up signposts. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen.